When it comes to AI images, I'm a little more lukewarm than most people because I think the style looks a little cheesy and there's not a real place I can use it in my production workflow in just my day-to-day -day stuff because I can't art direct it in the way I would any other normal image made by hand, you know? Uh, but Adobe just released a new software called Substance Viewer. And that one of the features is that you can kind of art direct the AI with 3D models. And I think it's really powerful. And I, I really do feel like more people should know about it. But there's a little bit of setup that you got to do to get it working. So in my case, here I am in Stager. Uh, I pick Stager, but you can really use any 3D app. But you have to set up your model here. Uh, so in my case, I have this little pumpkin and it already has, if I go into the textures, you can see I got my base color, the roughness, everything all set up already. And the reason this is important is because in Substance Viewer, you can only plug in, at least at the moment, because it's a beta app, maybe, maybe this changes, but you can only plug in, I think it's the, the base color and the roughness. So things like normal or uh, a height channel or something you can't plug in. So it's already got to be baked into whether this is exported as an FBX or a USD or whatever. Uh, it's already got to be packaged up. So anyway, um, I got my pumpkin. And so I'll go ahead and open Substance Viewer. So this is in the beta section of the Creative Cloud. You'll just find it there. Uh, but I will go ahead and find my exported 3D model. And so you can see here is my pumpkin. So at first it looks like just like a, a viewport for 3D models. It's pretty basic. And if you click around though, you'll notice there's a couple tabs here, but in the generate tab is where all this AI stuff is. So text to 3D is pretty self-explanatory, but we want 3D model to image. And so when I click on that, so it doesn't look like much, but here on the left side is where all your options are. And it looks pretty similar to something like generative fill if you used that before, but under composition, you'll have three options. And the gist of it is the top one is generating new backgrounds. So you'll keep your 3D model. Let's say you already have your textures. Everything's already set up. Uh, we just want a new background to kind of composite this into a scene. That's what you'll use. However, if you just want everything new and you're more so looking for an AI image that's like art directed and kind of composited with 3D models, you'd use the second one. And the third one would just be generating the new model. So rather than a background, you're just the model itself giving it a new look. In this case, I'll just generate a background and kind of composite this into a scene. So you can hit this thing for more options and they're all pretty self-explanatory. There's not much to tutorialize here because it's pretty self-explanatory for the most part, uh, changing the different effects and colors and so on. Uh, I'll just take it as is for the moment and go ahead and write a description. I'll just say pumpkin patch and generate. And you'll see it composited my pumpkin into a couple different scenes. It does like a light paint over with a more so with just the lighting to composite a little better. But I mean, it does a pretty good job of adding it into a scene. And this isn't something you'd use for absolute final art, I, ideally. I mean, I've seen some commercials, but ideally you wouldn't use something like this for final art, but more so the thumbnails or general ideation. I think this is really powerful and gets the idea across really quickly. But so let's say you wanted to download this image. It's pretty easy too. You just hover over this square tile and then download and there you'll have it. But one thing it also does really well is if you have a base model, maybe just some kind of clay sketch you do in ZBrush or something, uh, you can use that model to really art direct an entire image. So I'll show you what I mean by that because in Stager, I have this other model. It's similar idea. It's uh, what I was imagining as like an orange tree with like this sphere representing an orange. Like it's nothing crazy. There's no details here. Uh, so that I was thinking like a composition where maybe the camera's a little more shallow, focusing directly on the orange with leaves in the background. And what I can do is just export this, even though there are no colors, no nothing uh, in viewer, I'll go ahead and import it. Don't save. Uh, here's my scene and I want a bit more of a shallow depth of field, like I was saying, a little more micro photography. So I am going to change the field of view to something a little stronger, less fish eyed. Uh, and then go to my generate tab, 3d model to image. And this time, because I don't have textures, I don't have anything. I really just have the base model and kind of 
roughing out the composition with it, I'm going to generate a whole new image. And in the settings, I want to change the lighting, probably like more of a golden hour. And because I'm, I'm just imagining like a, a sunset orange photography, really dramatic. And then in composition, I will go to shallow depth of field and kind of position it roughly. It's a beta, so right now I don't think I can change the actual aspect ratio. It's all a square, but you know, that, that's fine. Um, so I'll kind of position it to the side, maybe adjust the camera a little bit. And then in the description, I will just say orange tree. Yeah, let's see what that gets, orange tree. And you'll see some of these versions maybe kind of interpreted the leaves as oranges, which is not what I wanted, but it's pretty close. So I like I'll sit here and generate new versions and maybe in Photoshop I'll paint over stuff to kind of remove weird spots because like, for instance, here on the top right, that's like just some oddly bright glow, but you know, it's not the end of the world, just patch that up. Uh, but for general ideation, I mean, that it doesn't get much quicker than that, you know, like art directing the scene and kind of positioning the camera as I want it and really getting the loose idea as quickly as I possibly can. Uh, this is super powerful. Uh, and then like before, if I would like this, I would just download it. But yeah, so that is the new 3D AI feature from Substance Viewer. I, I see a lot of potential with it. And, you know, if you use the app, you'll actually click around and really see there's, there's a, quite a few limitations with just little things like aspect ratio or export sizings or whatever. But it's a beta, so I'm sure those will get ironed out. But I really do see a lot of potential with it. So I guess we'll see where that goes next. But till next time.